Parenthood? Did anybody mention anything about a Planned Parenthood? Honey, I love me some Planned Parenthood. I was incarcerated in the San Bruno County Jail and Rodessa came out into the jail and they were doing a play and I knew a lot of girls in the jail so I was like I didn't want to stay in a dorm so I would go out and see what this was about and I went out and I've been there ever since it's been 24 years you know how we all like that alcohol and have to get to the liquor store by 2 o'clock yeah. well back in the day me and my girl at Planned Parenthood by 4.30 to get them condoms. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Them condoms. The dress rehearsal. I was standing back there. I got really, really emotional. You know, it's just something just magical about uh, on my way to walking out on the stage. I just love it. What am I? Who and what have I become? I never thought I could break my own heart. But I have, over and over again. I never thought I would be doing anything like this. Never entered my mind that I would be doing anything like this. I broke my own heart when I let a man do things to me that I really didn't want him to do. It was like I was in a nightclub, like, and I was just like I was singing the blues, telling the story. But you see, I was on drugs, and he was supplying. I got pregnant, had an abortion, and he od Who are these women? And what? What are they to you? To you? To you? She's our mama. She's your lover. That woman's the woman who's going to carry your child. Oh, they wear my mother's face. My sister. My daughter. What better way to open a show that's talking about theater for incarcerated women in collaboration with Planned Parenthood than to have the cornucopia of a culture in a way? They were all there, the faces were all there. So this time, my period didn't come. The sizes and the shapes, and that's what Birthright was talking about. Scared, I'm pregnant, I'm 13. I'm not having a baby, abortion. It is a patchwork quilt of the weeks that we've spent with Planned Parenthood's providers, social workers, clients. Uh, to share stories about what does Planned Parenthood mean in the 21st century. It took me a minute to be able to be like, well, I don't want to tell these people my story. I don't really, I don't know them like that. I think it should be after when he laughed. But it made me feel like I'm not alone. Before I could scream and before I could shout, he laid me out, covered my mouth, pulled down my pants, and whispered, shut up, bitch. I cried in silence. He stuck his penis in me. Boys are rotten, made out of cotton. Girls are happy, made out of candy. Okay, so go back. Let's push her out one more time. You got so far out. Go through. Being a part of Birthright is letting people, the community, know that we're standing up for who we are and what we believe in for ourselves as women, women of all culture. This stuff comes with you arriving on this planet. You know, there's rights, these rights to make decisions about your own body, the right to happiness. I appreciate the show for allowing me to be able to spill my heart. Medea is a foundation for me. Medea helps me to look at the world a little different as a woman, because I never done that before. My race was a crime so unspeakable, so shameful, I became a mute. Through my own darkness, I now sort out my life. I am healing the memories of being raped as a child.
child. I have to carry these memories for the rest of my life. But I will not carry the burden and silence and shame anymore. We create a circle where they feel safe. And I really abhor that term because there's no safe place in the world. But I feel like at least with the Medea Project as a circle of women, these women feel safe enough that they can come out about who they really are, what their fears are, what their angers are, they, what they have suffered, the journey that they've taken. All women have a story. I don't care where you come from, what background or whatever. Something happened to you. All women, somewhere, some place in time, I don't care what it is, something happened to you. And I think we all have the same story. And we just all tell it in a different way. That's the most powerful thing for me. That's what I think. There's a liberation that comes with finding your voice. I have to carry these memories for the rest of my life. But I will not carry the burden of silence and shame any more. In the Medea Project, you will find your voice. The stories that I write and the other women write, it's, it's, it's growth. It's something that we could release and take the power out of. Not only that, is to educate other women that you're not alone going through this, you know, because we all are recovering from something. When I first started this, this um, um, collaboration with Planned Parenthood, I lost some women. And I mean, not to be hard on my sisters, it's just that I, I, I know that over the time of working in the prisons with women and African-American women, the history of slavery has definitely wounded us about life and holding on to life. For so long, we had no control over life. But at the same time, I was so dismayed when women couldn't work with me because, it, you know, they were like, oh, oh no, I, uh, uh, I, I know what this is about. And no, you don't. I have two or three women in my group that are 19, 20, 21, and they've already either been raped and, uh, you know, gotten pregnant that way or caught HIV. We really have to drive at home how important Planned Parenthood is for our daughters. We have some amazing stories that uh, I've collected about women making choices or not feeling they can make choices or the bitterness behind making certain choices. And uh, our job is to move in as the midwives, as the sisters, as the mothers, to comfort them. And it's so great to be standing with Planned Parenthood as we look at the future for the women that I'm involved with. So far, there have been 240 measures to restrict abortion in state houses across the country just this year. And from 2011 to 2013, we saw more anti-abortion measures enacted in the states than we had in the previous decade. <laughs> that I could get pregnant. Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> no, but really, I learned that I too could be with child. No matter what stress or artificial hormones or anorexia were preventing me from bleeding. A lot of work that Medea does is with formerly incarcerated women or with the HIV circle and I haven't been incarcerated and I'm not HIV positive. And so I was, you know, wondering, like, do I, will I have anything to contribute? I learned that almost every woman that I knew had had an abortion. That this procedure, the one that no one Everyone's about. story is important. And everyone goes through issues around being a woman and choice in their bodies, you know, no matter what their background is. I learned that Mother Nature, she does not play. Ooh, don't mess Mother Nature. The amount of loss that I felt after. Oh. Not because of any guilt I felt. Oh, okay. No, there was no remorse, no doubt, no hesitation. Okay. But my body it was preparing to carry life, yes. to mother, to nurture, and then right. it wasn't. Right. For me, physically, 
I felt, you know, it was hard for me to have, have an abortion, and I felt so sad and depressed afterwards, but not because I thought that I'd made a mistake, and not because of my, I had issues around morality, but because hormones <laughs> suddenly dropped. Um, and I, and your, your body is changing, your body, like, you're losing your pregnancy is hard. Um, and I think, and I, and I think like the, that hasn't been talked about so much in the public and I wanted, you know, because it's all about, oh, how you feel about it, how, you know, which is important. But then what is the, you know, what are the physical ramifications also? Yeah. I learned that every woman's experience is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I learned by the nurse's surprise reaction when I asked to see it, that actually most women about to have an abortion do not want to see the ultrasound, not when given a choice. Yeah, I know. I learned that, not today, but one day, I do really want to have a child. Oh, oh girl, for what? And I know that every time I pass Planned Parenthood and I see those protesters outside, I will go into the clinic and I will give those women working the front desk 10 bucks because thank you, Planned Parenthood. He was my first boyfriend. I made him wait three years and then I finally gave it up. We had sex and he stopped calling. I was devastated. And six weeks later, I was throwing up everything I ate and my period was late. So I went to Planned Parenthood alone to take a pregnancy test. I was so scared. I was freaking out in the chair by myself. I'm like, oh my God, like shaking. I was tripping in there by myself. I just bum rushed the table. I didn't even care anymore. They had me wait and I was like, I'm not waiting no more. I need somebody to help me. Do I, Can I get an abortion or not? Like, what's going on? Can I get a pregnancy test? I started talking to him and the lady was like, just calm down. We'll talk about it. I'll get you, I'll get you in as soon as I can get you in. They had me take a pregnancy test. I had to wait two hours for it to come back. And after I took the test, she said it was positive and started talking to me about my options. Um, they asked me, did I want to keep it? And I was like, no, right off tops. And they gave me this book on how to be a good parent or good parenting or something like that. And it was basically about, you know, there are, you can make the choice to keep the child and, you know, we have resources to help you. And I was just like, no, I don't want to do that. So I opted to have a medical abortion, which is an enhanced miscarriage. And the doctor at Planned Parenthood suggested that I have someone with me while I miscarry. So I called him. And I called, and I called, and I called, and he didn't answer. So I decided I didn't need nobody. I did it all by myself. A week later, I went back to Planned Parenthood and they confirmed that the pregnancy had been terminated. That night, I tried to kill myself. Overdosing on my mother's sleeping pills, I woke up in the hospital. I didn't know if I was ready to talk about it openly like that yet. I was like, I don't want to talk about this. I never knew how precious life was until I tried to take my own. And sometimes I still cry myself to sleep because I aborted my baby. I mean, he could have been the next Obama or the next Dr. King. But then the I Rosa talked Parks to Rodessa about it and she was like, this is the time to talk about it. I'm starting to trust myself because eventually you're gonna have to talk about it. I'm learning how to accept the fact that I broke my own heart. We don't just have abortions and go home and like, woo, that's off my back. I'm dealing with this still and this was three years ago. Planned Parenthood is a good place for women to go. We don't need to ask our mother, we could get whatever, we need counseling, we need guiding, we just need somebody to talk to. Please don't close uh, Planned Parenthood because there's girls out here that need Planned Parenthood. Income, poverty, you know? Planned Parenthood is the place that you can go if you don't have money. These are the people who will, lo be, will lose and this is where the suffering is. I think a woman should have a right to choose, even though for me, for my religion, I believe that if you get pregnant that you should have the baby, but isn't, that's not for everybody. Everybody has their own say, and if a woman doesn't want to have a baby, then she shouldn't have to have a baby. 
You cannot take that away from us. You know, who who you think you are, you know, to make a, a choice for our life. All women in love, 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 babies. All women in love, babies. Thank mm -hmm. you.